Welcome to the Risk Forever channel guys. My name is Champion Ever. And today we are going to review one of my games. Let's get it started guys. Today we are playing 4 players fixed cards game on classic risk map. Time per turn is 60 seconds. Time in fixed cards not as much important as in progressive cards ones. However, sometimes you need to act really quickly, and it can be crucial, especially when it comes to the endgame. This time I'm playing against expert rank player who is blue, intermediate rank player who is yellow, and one expert difficulty bot which is green. It's supposed to be a novice rank player, but he didn't ready up. Guys, always pay attention and make sure to ready up. Anyways, keep your fingers crossed for me in this game, I will need the best of luck. I really hope that the goddess Fortuna will be on my side today. The yellow player was the first player to capture a continent. He conquered Australia. Players who get continents first have the highest chances to win the game. However, these chances are highly being reduced whenever another person captures a continent. So if you get a continent early, you need to think quickly, how to increase troop bonuses you receive, and to get even more of the advantage. I don't want that the yellow player would get a dominant position so quickly, I want to balance him. So this is why I captured South America, the blue player pulled all of his troops out from it, so I assume he won't attack me. I with yellow will be getting the same amount of troops each turn. Well, I don't want to stop over here, I need to get more troops than him, so this is why I'm planning to capture Africa as well as soon as possible, whenever I get a proper ability to do that. And oh my goodness guys! I cannot believe that the blue player tried to invade me. Well, at least he failed. Ha! Huh. In your face blue. But like why in a world, you pulled your troops out from South America, showing that you're letting to capture it for another player and that you were not going for it by yourself, just to attack me in the next turn. Like what's your logic? You just needed to keep your troops in South America if you didn't want that I had captured it, so I would have stuck to my primary plan to go for Africa. Oh my goodness guys. These players are totally going to kill me off. Like come on, yellow, come on. Well, actually it was smart for yellow to invade me. He is the only player who has a continent yet. So he need to do everything to sustain his advantage, to increase troop bonus of him, or decrease troop bonus of others, like he just did by invading me. So I totally see the point of the yellow player, but the blue player's attack was unexpected and even dumb I would say. Well, let's recapture South America, I guess the yellow player won't have an ability to attack me again, and the blue player either go for Europe, or will start building his troops into one big army. Let's see how it goes. Alrighty. Oh no. He's coming. Like come on you son of You're in. You can go in. Anyways, let's get back to the game guys. I hope you like my family friendly channel, and if you don't then... Actually never mind. I would rather say silent for now. Anyways I think it was really stupid for Blue to invade me. He's just giving an advantage for the yellow player, the game becomes less and less balanced. When there's no balance anymore, one player becomes too strong and eventually wins, as he has more troops than the other players combined. So this is why I gave up on South America and put my troops which I've got from turning in a set, in Asia, instead of fighting with blue for the continent, as if I would've put my troops in South America and attacked him then nobody would have stopped yellow anymore from totally winning this game. I'm not that stupid to fight for a continent. I'm not so desperate to get a continent like blue, he wanted to get South America at any cost, even if that means that he will have to lose the game. Or maybe he wasn't that smart to realize. But in any case, remember guys, the balance of the game is the most important thing in fixed card games. You should do everything to sustain it. Well, unless you're the strongest player, if you are, then you need to think of ways of how to unbalance it even more in your favor, and become even stronger. How to increase your troop bonuses of yours, or how to decrease troop bonuses of others. This is what the yellow player currently does. 
he tries to increase his troop bonus by capturing Africa. But he doesn't even have enough troops to properly guard the newly captured continent. So what do you think guys, will I attack him? Of course I will. That's for sure. But you should never attack into players continents only because you can do that, just to attack, just to ruin his bonuses. You should always look into situation. To make the decision which would be the best for the balance of the game. In this situation yellow is the dominating player. This is why I attacked him. Well, by not that much though, so it was really more up to me whether to attack him or not. But if the blue player would have way more troops than yellow, then I would have definitely let to hold Africa for yellow. My main goal is to do everything that both of the players would be more or less equally strong. You're my wondering why do I said both of them, not all the three of them. Some of you might think that I forgot about the green player. Well, remember guys, we don't treat computer players in the same way we treat our real opponents. The green player isn't the real player, he is being controlled by computer. Or AI, artificial intelligence, call in any way you want to, it doesn't make any difference, but what am I saying, is that this current artificial intelligence in this app is not very smart yet, in the developing stage I mean, that you can even defeat it even if you have quite less troops than it. Well, but the developers are currently working on it, and with every update computer players will become more and more smarter. I understand that it takes a lot of time. But anyways, what am I trying to say, when it comes to one versus one with one bot battle, the real players are always targeting each other, completely leaving the computer player alone. Exactly the same is going to happen in this game, when one of the players will be defeated, either me, blue or yellow, the two remaining players will be only attacking each other, until one of them will be defeated, and only then will start to attack the green player, the bot. So far the situation looks quite good. Both of the players are balancing each other. Well, the yellow player would like to get Africa, but we don't let him to hold it, la la la. So everything looks quite good for now. So far so good guys. It seems the blue player might expand to North America, or maybe he just doesn't want that the green bot would capture the continent. Cause if the bot captures North America, then the player for who this action will be the least favorable is blue. You know guys, if you have a border with a bot, then this bot will be adding more and more troops next to your border until it eventually attacks. Sometimes completely ruining the whole game and giving a tremendous advantage to one of the players. Too bad bots don't know what the balance of the game is. It seems they are programmed to attack anything and everything what's on their way. Well, sometimes they target and focus on the weakest player, and I think this is kinda ridiculous, isn't it guys? Like the video if you agree with me. Let me know your opinion about current AI in the comments section down below. Anyways, you probably noticed that I moved my biggest army from Asia to North America. I did that for two reasons. The first reason is that I don't want that the blue player would focus on expanding to North America. I would prefer that his main focus would be the yellow player. And the second reason is that I don't want that the yellow player would be scared of my biggest army floating around Australia. I don't want that he would put majority of his troops to Siam territory to protect Australia. Instead of that, I want that he would focus on capturing continents which the blue player doesn't let him to hold. So, talking in general, my main goal is that the conflict between blue and yellow would keep going that their main and only goal would be is to attack each other. And who knows, maybe they will go on each other so harsh that I might get an opportunity to swipe them out in a single turn, as I will have more troops than both of them combined. This is how my current plan looks like. Basically to wait when they destroy each other. But you know guys, plans aren't always working as they supposed to be. We will see how it goes. Wish me best of luck guys. Oh my goodness guys, the blue player fortified his troops from one of his borders to Europe, lalalal. I assume he is afraid of my biggest army. 
He probably thought that I was going to swipe him out from South America. Well, I didn't have any intentions to do that. Because that would have been so, so ridiculously stupid. As then the yellow player would have had way more troops than both of us combined and would have totally won this game. Well, but since the blue player moved half of his troops to Europe, and another half of his troops was taken down by the yellow player, I was more than happy to take South America which was empty at that moment. I attacked the yellow player in Africa as well, because I neither want that the yellow player would have that continent, nor that he would have some troops next to my border. The green AI has captured North America. Will I let it to hold that? Of course I won't. I don't want that the AI would start putting more and more troops next to my border until it eventually attacks. So it is the best to prevent AI from doing that as soon as possible. Why to wait until it adds multiple troops next to my border while I can simply attack 3. So I won't have to waste my troops later on. So I consider it was a very good decision for me to attack the AI into North America in the same turn it was captured. The sooner the better. I captured some extra territories in Africa because I wanted increased troops bonus the yellow player gets by having many territories. You guys probably already know that the more territories you have, the more troops you get each turn. So at the same time by capturing many territories I'm reducing the troop bonus the yellow player gets, and increasing the troop bonus I get. Well, currently I only have 10 territories in total, so I don't get any additional troops for it. But I'm planning to capture more territories later on. Or actually let's do it right now, without waiting anything. Freak this bot. I don't want that the bot would continue to add its troops to North America. So I think it will be the best if it won't have many territories in that continent. I didn't capture the last territory in North America for two reasons. The first reason is that I don't want to unleash 17 troops army which bot has in the Iceland territory and would recapture all of the territories I just captured. And the second reason I didn't capture North America is because I don't want that the players would start paying all of their attention to me. I know that if I will capture this continent when it will definitely be invaded by one of the players. I don't want that, I'm pretty happy with the troop bonus I get by having multiple territories. Like look guys, if I capture North America then I'm more than sure that it will be invaded by the blue player in the same turn I would have captured it. And then he would have probably would even went deeper to South America, so I would be without a continent again. Or maybe not, but that's too much risk to consider. I would rather have the blue player next to Australia, so the yellow player will be more or less scared of him. Like you saw guys, the yellow player put his 22 troops army he had over here to Siam territory to strengthen Australia, instead of having it somewhere next to me, to possibly attack me. So I reckon that the yellow player is quite afraid of blue. And oh no guys, look what the green computer player just did. He fortified some troops to my North America border. He doesn't have to attack with this army anywhere else, so he is going to attack my 17 troops. I don't want that to happen. So I need to unleash his army from the other side. Let's do that. Sweet. I should be good now. But on the other hand I just unleashed the yellow player's biggest army. And I have no idea what is he going to do with that army. He might attack me into South America, well, I'm not sure how beneficial it would be that for him as I don't know if he would have enough troops to guard Australia from blue. And considering how the blue player was attacking me in the beginning of the game for South America, he would definitely would try to take Australia from blue if he gets any opportunity to do that. So I'm really wondering how the game will go. What is going to happen? It could go to any direction. Oh my freaking goodness. I didn't see that coming. It's the best possible choice that the yellow player could have ever made. Finish him! I cannot believe how lucky am I. I cannot believe what the yellow player has just took the blue player out. Some of you might say that I just won the game. Apparently I didn't guys, because look at the troops counter I'm only 5 troops ahead of yellow. Plus the bot has a lot of troops as well. 
Now the following decisions which will be made by me and yellow will have a really high impact of the end game. And I think the yellow player has just made a mistake. He tried to invade South America by attacking my 34 troops army with the 25 troops of his. He needed to go way around, coming from the Greenland territory. But because he didn't do that, now I not only got two additional troops by holding South America, but got some extra troops by having many territories as well. Plus now I have an advantage the position wise as well. His 18 troops army is blocked in Australia, and he cannot really do anything with it. So now it pretty much seems that I won. He will definitely struggle with me capturing all of these continents. But still anything can happen. I'm not guaranteed to win. Maybe we will kill each other off so much that bot will overcome us and win the game. I wouldn't like for that to happen. But you probably remember guys, when it comes to one versus one with one bot, the real players are always focusing on each other completely ignoring the bot. But yeah guys, it seems the yellow strategies are screwed up. I'm doing really well by holding both of the Americas. I think it's just a matter of time when I will win. Like look guys. He cannot really do anything for me anymore. He cannot handle the situation anymore. I think it was a mistake for him to take the blue player out. As he got a lot of disadvantage position wise. Plus the bot totally does more damage to him than to me. Probably the bot doesn't do any damage to me at all. It seems that the bot only favors me, the troops of the bot are like little shields against yellow. If yellow wants to attack me, then he must go over all of these troops of the bot. So yeah guys, now it seems it was a total mistake for yellow to take the blue player out. So always remember guys, in the situations when you can afford to take someone out, you should always take into account all of the possible situations what can happen when you take that person out. Will it more favor you, or your opponents? And how the game is going to look in general? The yellow player's decision put him in a totally disadvantageous situation which led him to drastically losing the game. And it's just a matter of time when I finish him off. Look he has no other choices anymore but just to give up. I'm going to take him out in the next turn, and then I will deal with the bot easily. It won't be a problem. Let's do this guys. Can I totally wipe the yellow player out? Pretty sure I can. And this brings us to the end of this episode guys. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I will be sharing even more tips and tricks on how to win at risk and increase your rank in no time. I recommend you to watch some of my playlists to have better understanding on how to properly play with specific cards. Also it's always useful to re-watch some of Risk vids, as you need to keep your memory fresh, you might already forgot some of very useful information which is most known to dominate at Risk. Anyways, let me know in the comments section down below if you prefer longer Risk episode like this one. Peace out.